Today, I'm talking to a platinum producer who has songs with Future, Koi Vo, Nardo Wick, Ty Dolla Sign, Money Man, and many more, all at the age of 17 years old. He's gonna go through and teach us how he gets placements, and at the end, he's gonna show us how he cooks up crazy vibes for people like Future. And I was just like, wow, like, I can really take this to the next level. Just had that new Future and Koi Vo record. How did that one actually get placed? These guys were able to get it to Koi Vo, and I just heard in June, there was like, yo, bro, like, we might be on Koi Vo's album, y'all. All right, we're here with my boy, Max Shooter. Hey, what's up, guys? First off, how did you actually get into making beats and how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been making beats for around three years, making samples for around two. I was in school, I wasn't doing nothing, so I was kind of just like bored in school and I just stumbled across like FL Studio Mobile. And so then that's when I come across like Nick Mira and Internet Money Tutorials. And after that, it's literally a blur. Like I just started making beats. And then, like, even before making samples, I was making like drum kits too, because I like doing like the sound design part. It helped me kind of escape into my own world where I could just create anything i want like a sandbox how did you actually make your like your first dollar first sale from music it was through youtube man uh i used to make tutorials for this old youtube collective with a bunch of like younger producers when i was like 13 14 called prodigy collective my first dollar was just off of like my b stars i just made like a drum kit like it was eight dollars i think it was back in october of like 2020 and i was just like wow like i can really take this to the next level i started building my brand like that and then started my own channel and started going crazy how did you actually get your first like major placement my first major placement was with soldier boy which was in about november of 2020 i started sending out loops and i uh i started because me and juco we took this list that this dude forgot to bcc <laughs> we was just going stupid on those dark melodies and we just wanted to find a bunch of producers to send it to my boy ad produced by ad had like soldier boy's contact and he just sent a beat over with my melody and then i think by two months later I, I just hear atl jacob rapping on my melody and stuff so i'm just like wow so yeah after that everything was up so did you always know like since you started that you were gonna see any success with music 100 percent no i thought i was gonna go to school i wanted to go to yale bro like i was such a school nerd you know not a nerd but i was willing to take it to that level because i knew i was freaking i could be a genius if i wanted to but i thought i was just gonna do this 100 percent for fun for creativity i didn't expect any placements i didn't expect any money it's safe to say you're you're working with some pretty big names now you just had that new future and Quavo record how did that one actually get placed i was just playing around on the profit 10 bro and just creating just a bunch of leads and a bunch of like weird different chords and so when i did that i just sent it out as a starter on my boy beso what i was just talking about earlier and he sent it to these two producers called a uh, a taken a sluzzy these guys were able to get it to quavo and i just heard in june there was like yo bro like we might be on quavo's album y'all i was really excited just for quavo itself and then about a month later in july the snippet surfaced and I, like i was going stupid i was just like dude like no way quavo put future as the feature i mean it's just crazy bro like you could even say it's just a bit of luck too that record's a real special one to me for real if you had to start from zero today what would you do to get your first major placement i would say if i started zero and i wanted to get a bunch of placements i would definitely start off first by making sure i have the quality to where producers want to work with me and then start networking just network all day like me and juco used to do 20 dms a day or even find some sort of way to make some noise on the internet because that's going to be your strongest suit so pretty much you would you would definitely be focusing on samples right and then also be building your your online brand like at the same time when when people notice that you're working on your brand you're working on youtube or whatever and you're just letting your music speak for yourself that's kind of like where i would say what strategies are you using right now to get major placements i really don't have like a specific strategy it sort of just happens i send to a lot of producers you know my samples i send to flps i send starters but it's just straight music focus on only what you can control so yeah. if i control getting placements i won't focus on it i'll literally just focus on what i can control which is my sample making which is getting better in my sample making or anything else in every aspect what are some big mistakes that you see up and coming producers make when they're trying to get placements or getting a name for themselves in the industry it's like a few it's like not having enough patience combined with not having a personality combined with thinking it's gonna happen overnight it's never okay to like continue to stay frustrated and to stay like having this bad mindset you know what i'm saying in terms of like i'm not seeing any results i'm gonna stop this don't expect too much out of people you know but expect the most out of yourself just keep it going and keep pushing like just don't give up i will say like all technical strategies and all that shit aside everyone that when i started like cooking up with them when i was 15 in discord rooms and shit everyone who kept going from those discord group chats is doing something now and they're making a full-time living off of it people just don't give it enough time for stuff to compound you know what i mean so how do you balance 
owning a sound kit company, putting out content, and also chasing placements at the same time. I made a post on Threads the other day. I was like, businessman in the morning, music producer at night, because that is my split officially. I got to get up like super early. I get up at like five, six now. I might either do music in the morning and do business at night or, or switch it both. And when it comes to posting content for the brand and everything like that, time management is probably the huge key. Like, so my biggest thing to that is I got no other tips or advice except use your time wisely. This thing right here, bro, is the biggest distraction. I don't care what nobody says. I got a little gem for you or anyone watching if you don't already to, to stop yourself on the phone. I turn my phone on black and white mode. Everything is so ugly to look at. I don't like looking at my phone. That helps That's me. Fire. That helps me for sure. All right. So what is your main focus now? For like overall, I want to make a huge impact on the whole world, bro. Like I'm trying to have a bunch of people learn off of me, not only through music, but as a person, because I feel like that I can inspire tons of people through sound, through my habits, stuff like that. Like if I can inspire someone and change the way they live and change the way they think, that's really like my whole purpose here. I want money for my family. I want the nice cool things in life, you know, nice homes and stuff. But I don't know, man, if I was to die with no money, but I helped millions of people, I would be okay with that. And how many skills can I learn before I die? That's what I'm trying to go to. So now if you're cool with it, I would just like to go in and cook some shit up, get some insight on your, your kind of creative process. Cause I feel like you have some of the craziest like sound design, different sound to your to your music than anyone else. So I think there's a lot of gems there. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah, bet. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab this one shot from Synthopia, which if you don't already know, has thousands of sounds from real analog synths, over $117,000 of analog hardware. If you want that, it'll be the first link in the description down below. But yeah, let's get into this all right i think i'm gonna just start with this one shot then i got this portal preset from syntopia the tape stretch preset bounce that down into one file and then i'm gonna pitch this up a bunch 14. Pitch it up one more time. All right, I think that's it. I'm gonna just send this over to you right now. So when you're making melodies, like, are you intentionally thinking about what you're going to be doing? You just kind of like clicking stuff and seeing what happens. I've clicked stuff, bro. That's been my, my, that's been my thing this whole time. That's dope. Shit's hard. So how do you make sure that your stuff is still simple enough to get used, but it's like unique and stands out from people? For me, it's like a fine line to where I'm like, ooh, I'm doing too much, but I always like to have like room. But I've just been keeping a lot of my samples and even a lot of my beats super simple. Whatever sounds good to you, for real. Sounds crazy. You think this pitch is good or? For some reason, I like that one. Bro, that's fun watching other people cook up and just like see like what they do different. Like just watching you do shit. I'm like, damn, well, I would not have done. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy. Well, that's crazy.
Trying to do something here. Hey, yeah, that's what I want. one more thing a lot of those are kind of different like those are different and that's how it's done yeah, that's how it's done if you want to learn a ton of ways to get your first major placement click this video right here